What's up you guys, it's Taking Chris and I'm back here with another video. In this video, my goal is to pretty much help you guys and coach you guys on how to go about your network engineering interviews. And honestly, yes, this video is for network engineering interviews, but you can also use this information for other tech interviews as well. Pretty much, if you have any kind of network engineering interview coming up, whether it's your first network engineering position or you are on your third, fourth, fifth network engineering position, no matter where you are in your career, if you are looking for guidance on your interview, this video is for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first point on my list is your mindset. When you go into an interview, you have to have a clear mind. You can't come into an interview with imposter syndrome. And for you guys who don't know, imposter syndrome is just basically thinking that you are not good enough to be in this position that you are. So mentally, you kind of screw yourself up. You have to realize that your resume was good enough to get moved on to the next level. So you should take this opportunity of an interview and maximize it to the best of your abilities. Like quite frankly, you do not have to know everything. I personally do not know everything. There is still so much that I'm trying to learn every single day. And if I looked at myself and was like, I'm not good enough, I don't know this, how am I ever gonna pass this kind of interview? I wouldn't be in the position that I am right now. So yeah, when you come in into an interview, come in with a mindset that whatever they ask you, you are going to have an answer for them. Don't come in nervous. Don't come in feeling like uh, maybe I could do good. Maybe I could do bad. No, you have to come in with that mindset that you are coming in to take it all. You're coming in to show them that you are the right person for that job. The key with mindset is the confidence. You have to have your own confidence and stand on that confidence. Like, trust me, there have been times that an interviewer has asked me a question and I struggle. I pretty much struggle in my head to answer that question, but I look at the interviewer with a straight face and pretty much be confident. Even if I'm not 100% sure about this answer, I still answer with confidence. And I can tell them, hey, I haven't worked specifically with this technology, but I've used this technology and me knowing this technology gives me an advantage to be better at this technology. It's really all about the confidence and how you hold yourself. Number two, my next point for you for network engineering interviews is to know your resume. I know a lot of the time we get in this trap where we kind of put stuff on our resume that we didn't exactly do or even if we did it, we didn't really play as big as a part in it that we that we might have said we played. And that's fine. Sometimes it's okay to exaggerate what you did on your resume. But the thing with that is you have to know your resume and know the information that you put on your resume. Whatever you put on your resume, you have to be able to back it up. If the interviewer asks you a question about configuring BGP inside of an environment and it's clearly written there on your resume and then you start stumbling and not able to really give a background on your experience, not able to really give any further details on how you configured that BGP, what kind of circuits you guys might have used. From that point in that interview, you will start to look like a fraud. The interviewer will obviously know that you don't know what you're talking about. And even though you might have worked with that technology or been on a team with people that worked on that technology, you have no way to back it up if you don't know about it. So make sure that everything that is on your resume you understand what it is and you're able to speak highly on what it is and it's not just knowing what you put on your resume being able to go into detail with it you might have on your resume that you did ios upgrades for the cisco routers but then the interviewer asks you what version of code did you upgrade to how do you go about your maintenance window or even something as simple as what was the need for the upgrade you will be stuck if you don't really have the understanding behind the things that are on your resume number three so moving on to the next point this is pretty much about understanding the job description any time I have an interview, I will take the job description and thoroughly understand all the points that are made in the job description. This is where you really have to study and make sure that you are up to date with all of your knowledge. There are times that I will look at a job description and I will see some type of technology that I haven't really used in my environment. So I'll have to go freshen up on that. Just because you don't use it and you don't feel like you need to know it does not mean that the interviewer will not ask you about that technology. Like they say, better safe than sorry. So anytime that I have an interview and I know that something is coming up, I thoroughly go through that job description and I also do a lot of research on the company to understand what their beliefs are and what their mission is. And even with that, you don't need to study every little individual thing. You just need to be well versed in the majority of things that are on the job description, especially the big things. Recruiters tend to put the more important things at the top. And even if they don't put it in order, some of the main things that you need to really understand for network engineering interviews are, are things like the OSI model, routing basics, understanding the OSI model. Sometimes you might get into a lot of 
wireless or even voice technologies and also knowing cable standards sometimes it does go overlooked but knowing cable standards will definitely help you out with interviews you just really have to know your tools and know the stuff that are around you and the things that you potentially could be using inside of your environment even if it's something like a cable crimper you have to know what that does it's good to freshen up on things like that number four so the next point that i would like to make is be ready for the troubleshooting questions that you are going to be attacked with and yes not all network engineering interviews are big on the troubleshooting aspect of things but when you're looking for those positions that are higher level with very lucrative salaries you need to be ready for those troubleshooting questions like say for instance the interviewer says something like hey i went into this idf and i noticed that a swift stack was down then the interviewer then asks you what steps would you go about troubleshooting this you need to be able to think fast and give him a plan on how you want to troubleshoot this you need to be able to talk through your processes and be confident in what you're saying and all of this really just comes from knowing your stuff in general but yeah troubleshooting questions are really the questions that tend to get people stumped a lot of the time i'm personally guilty of this too i have had interviewers ask me a question and i have to scratch my head before i could even give them an answer and having those experiences is what really made me dial in on learning the information before i get to the interview even though i think i know the information i still take the extra step of going going very deep into the job description and also freshening up my skills like things that I did back on CCNA. Number five, and that's gonna be behavioral questions. Yes, you most of the time are gonna have those technical questions, but behavioral questions are just as important. This goes back to what I said earlier in the video about being able to be personable with the recruiter. Every interview that I have, I find a way to kind of make a connection with that recruiter. It doesn't matter what it is, I will find something that me and that recruiter have in common and we can maybe do a quick joke and laugh about it, but whatever it is, I make my conversations seem more like a conversation rather than an interview. Recruiters hate interviews that just feel like a Q&A sermon. They really like when you're able to bounce back and talk with them, hold that conversation. And also out of that conversation, they're able to get information from you. A question that you might get in this part of the interview is things like, tell me how you handle situations when you're under a lot of pressure. And you need to be able to articulate how you handle those things in a well-mannered way. So lastly, guys, the day of the interview or the day right before the interview, you need to make sure that you are freshened up on all the topics that you potentially could be asked about on your interview. This is the best time and the most important time to go over your resume and completely skim every last bit of it. Make sure that you're able to confidently talk about the information that's on your resume and just do your due diligence with the extra information that could be asked during the interview. The night before is very important that you don't cram a lot of information into your brain. You need a clear mind when going into an interview like this. The recruiter already knows what he wants to know about you based on your resume. So if your resume was able to get you that interview, is just about capitalizing about what was on your resume and you need to make sure to ask good good questions and I know that you have heard this before but at the end of the interview you need to ask good questions questions most of the time i ask questions about like what does the team use and how do they use different services to speed up their workflow after your conversation you should have some questions for the recruiter so whatever those questions are go ahead and lock them in while you guys are talking so that when the end of the interview comes you can kind of just keep the conversation flowing so yeah that's pretty much my advice for passing network engineering interviews and to keep it real with you guys i have failed many interviews in my life but then again i've also passed many interviews in my life it's really just about reading the room and understanding what the recruiter wants out of you and being able to prove to that recruiter that you are able to meet the standards that he or she is looking for you should always remain confident with yourself and trust yourself to make the right answer choices sometimes it's hard to stay to a specific script but confidence will go a long way but yeah guys that is it for this video and if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and drop me a subscribe to my channel make sure you also like and comment on the video I have big news coming for you guys soon I will be opening up my mentoring and consulting sessions so you guys make sure to take advantage of those please because I really do want to help give back to you guys just hit 3,000 subscribers not too long ago and I want to show you guys that I'm here to help you guys advance in your career but yeah guys that is it for me please like comment subscribe and if you have any questions make sure to reach out to me on my website. Alright guys, that's it and I'm out.